So I'm with Mark Downs, England Nations, Europeans and under 25s manager. And following England's success in the recent Nations World Championships, I'd like to grab five minutes with Mark just to tell a little bit about how it went and what's going to be up and coming for England in the future. So welcome Mark and congratulations on uh, on the team's performance, phenomenal result. Yeah, cheers, it was, it was an excellent result. Um, a venue I've personally never been to in 30 odd years of international match fishing, I've never been to this venue. Heard a lot about it and we found out a lot about it. But as you know and I know, the, the big problem was, were we ever going to go? <laughs> yeah, so that was a, it was a fairly late decision to go, um, primarily because of the travel restrictions in the UK, but also in Italy. So how did the, how did the late decision affect your planning from a, well, a managerial it, point it, of view? It didn't affect us really, because all the lads um, prepared 100% on the, on the fact that we were going to go. And if the window opened, we could go, then all the preparation was already done. Um, one of the major things that was holding us back was a five day quarantine if we, if we had to go to Italy. But um, we had a concession from uh, the Italian government uh, because we were uh, fishing or we were competing in an international event, recognised event, um, we didn't have to quarantine. And so that opened the door very quickly for us and as soon as we got that notification we were off. And, um, and to be fair, the lads were brilliant. They, they had all the tests. We all had to have a pre-test before we went. One lad had to have two tests, one when he got there because he wasn't totally vaccinated. And uh, believe it or not, um, from the minute we got to the tunnel to the minute we got to Italy, there wasn't a single check of any of the paperwork we put together. Oh, really? It's ridiculous. Oh. I mean, it just spent hours getting all the paperwork together and there was not a single check. Well. When we got to the event, uh, once we signed, uh, we had to sign a um, really a form that says, "Look, you are not, you haven't got COVID, you've been vaccinated." It was just, uh, and that was it. I mean, it was so easy. The only problem we did have, the only time we were tested, was when we came back. Yeah, so it was a lot of obviously a lot of pre-work went into it, and as it turns out, it was yeah. everything was okay. Really, you know, they just got their heads down and got it done, and we met, you know, two, three different places for the for the pre-test, and we had to have a pre-test to come back. Got to the UK and we had to have a test two days after we got back. But to be honest, it was now we've done it once, we know what to do. Great. It's not difficult. So, obviously, because of the COVID affected the participation numbers this year, I mean, there's usually around 40, 45 yeah, nations take part. Yeah, it's normally around 40. There was, it was down to 23 this year, um, which is it's sad, but at the end of the day, I, I think we've we mentioned it before. We've got to get up and running again. Yeah, I mean, got to come back at some point. We've got to get start to get back. I think this will be with us for a while. We've, there might be some form of testing for the next year or two years, and, and you'll get different forms coming in. So, um, you know, we've got to prepare for it, and, and we can't just sit back and let everything go ahead without us. So we decided to move on. Great. So, OK, on to the championships and practice days, the practice sessions. How did that work out for you guys? Well, How did you we, find it? To be honest, our practice sessions were pretty much a disaster. We, we, we had five... When, when you draw a box number each day in five different sections, and to be honest, first of all, the best section was E section, and we never got to fish E section for some reason because we, we had two in D, um, but that's just the way it worked out. Not everybody could be in every section. So we missed the best fishing section. The problem with it was that the other sections, A, B and C, we drew in a particularly bad area, and those, those became evidence on match days how bad the areas we were that we, we, we actually practiced in. So, we didn't glean a massive amount of information from our own practicing, but I did something a little bit different this year. I actually got one or two of the lads to actually get off the boxes and go and watch a team that was catching, or go and you know watch the checks on the slider, or go and watch the and 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 it, because we weren't on fish, we couldn't you know couldn't put these uh, into operation. So we still prepared all the equipment you know for the day on a on on, on a tactic that we hadn't really managed to, to practice during, during 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 the practice week. So when you went into match days were you comfortable and confident about what you'd I learned or was it still a bit of about the team. It was I mean the lads have worked so hard. I mean I took four youngsters as you know. I took seven actually and you should, you, you can take seven because you haven't got to name the team till till the Friday. And um, and then on the Friday after name six. Sadly Matt Derry missed out. Um, Unfortunate, really, he had one day's less practice than anybody else, and it probably manifested itself on that way. Uh, Cameron did brilliant on the two two extra practice days he had, so Cameron uh, got moved in as opposed to Rory Rory Jones, who's still world under 25 number one, believe it or not, and um, and Matt and uh, the team on on the day. I think we fished really, really well. 
So just for the benefit of those who weren't sure, what was the team on day one? Oh, the team on day one was uh, Will Raisin, Steve Hemingway, Sean Ashby, uh, Matt Godfrey and Cameron Hughes. And so how did day one pan out for the team? Well, it panned out. I thought we weren't doing particularly well. I mean, we knew for a fact that we got a couple of bad ones. I knew Sean was doing well, I do. Um, Cameron was doing quite well. Cameron's on the upstream end peg, which you normally do well off, but I'll come back to that in a minute. And, um, and then we had um, Matt Godfrey was doing steady. But the two experienced lads were really struggling down the bottom end. They both come back in a 12th position. Um, Matt's, sorry, um, <coughs> Cam's end peg upstream. We hadn't fished these section, and uh, when I was mentioned to one or two, well, we got peg that says it's not a great peg. Why is it not a great peg? The thing you need on this river, because it's fairly deep, up to five and a half metres deep, and quite a bit of pace on it, there needs to be a, a line of feed all the way down the river, and there was nobody feeding above Cameron. So, and I've checked the results um, since I've got back, and of all the sections, five sections, the upstream end peg has not figured in the top 10 of any section. Mm. So, you know, it's end pegs are not always good end pegs unless you're <laughs> downstream end pegs and we didn't get one of them. So where were you sat after day one? Well, after day one we're lining fourth on 48 points, um, which is a very high point score, which just goes to show the nature of the venue. Um, Italy were miles ahead on 27. And then you've got Hungary and oh, Switzerland, both on 43. And then behind us, there was another one on... There was two on 48 and one on 49 and you know so it's very very tight at the top so then moving into day two did you make any changes um no we kept the same team because the lads that fished have got an extra day's experience and um when we drew we thought we've got quite a good draw here we drew uh, the mo most important section was c section because there was an area in the middle of it was terrible and we avoided that both days cameron drew a good peg on day two he drew the peg that the italian had caught off on day one um, and he went on to win his section with four kilo fabulous performance he had a lovely big chub with about two hours to go that sealed the deal um, but he didn't fish anywhere near as well as he did on day one so and, he, and he's to be honest he had an unbelievable first hour 37 scardola which is like a roach type fish um, in the first hour and he was like 15 fish ahead of anybody else so everybody was playing catch up to uh, to Cameron and reports from the bottom end um, and uh, my bankside runners were uh, you know, my assistant, uh, Darren Bickerton. Um, he was down on A section. He actually reported back that uh, Steve was probably fourth or fifth in his section. The next section up was, um, was uh, not William, it was Steve. Oh, Matt Godfrey doing very well in his section, top three or four. Then we come to Matt, then we come to Cameron Hughes, who was, in my opinion, was winning his section. And then we go to William on D section, who was top, top eight. And then Sean, who was top six. So I did it up, we were around 20 points. And then I looked at the Italian score, and I thought, they've got mega points. And I looked at the Hungarian score, they've got mega points. And I, and I thought, after two and a half hours, I honestly believe we were, we were probably lying in, 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 in gold medal position. And I thought, this is ridiculous, you know. Anyway, as the match progressed, these big fish started to play a part, and our lads started to fall down the sections a little bit. And, and um, at the end, I thought we might nick silver, but um, for, for me, the best team on the day was um, was the Czechs, Czech, Czech Republic. Three of their anglers fished a slider superbly, and they scored quite low points, uh, 31 I think they scored, and uh, they just pipped us for the silver. Italy rallied a little bit at the end, although they scored a massive 51 points, they could have scored 60, 65 points, but they had too big job <clears throat> in the last 15, 20 minutes just to push their lads up the section. So it was a, it was a great, great performance from the lads. The youngsters did superbly well i mean matt and matt, matt, matt i think matt and uh, cameron finished fifth and seventh respectively uh, the old timers <laughs> and they're not that old um they, you know they they uh, they, they struggled a little bit at times but uh, william was william was brilliant he's um, he's led he's led the team magnificently through the week as you probably know i made william captain and uh, he's got a good vibe with the with the youngsters he uh, drives them on to prepare and you know get everything spick span and I think William will have a massive part to play in, in future years as, as, as a captain's role and um, it's something that I think we need to develop. So I mean obviously you know, phenomenal performance, great results, you guys have had a number of medals and podiums over the years, is this, does this one rank any special, more special well, it, than any of the others? Yeah or? it does rank special really because it's so difficult now to podium 
especially in Italy. Italy is a very difficult country to go to. We've won once in Italy and on uh, Spinadesco, I think it was. But um, it's very, very difficult to podium, especially on species that we know little about, the Scardola and Sun Perch. We caught a lot of Sun Perch that give us a lot of bonus points. And uh, they're alien to us, but we figured it out. We figured it out well. And uh, us, the, the youngsters, although they are they're young, they are massively experienced. I think everyone has got a minimum of 13 years international experience from, from under 13 right the way up to under 25. And, and all of the, those have travelled with their club teams abroad to fish competitions and the more experience they get, the better, better, we'll, we'll, better we'll do. Yeah, good. And I mean, you know, the, the, the social media coverage since you got back, it's really been pretty special and incredible. What does it mean to you guys as a team and as a unit to see how well your performance has been recognised and to see all of that positivity on the internet and, and through the written press as well. Well, it was it was incredible, really, um, Ben, because um, we made a conscious effort this year to to get some media out there. So we actually orchestrated team photographs and that before we started fishing. And Matt Godfrey was one of the instigators in that because you know he works in the media and press anyway. But I didn't want it to affect media's as um, Matt's fishing during the week. So we, we wrapped up uh, most of our, uh, our own personal photographs up on the uh, Sunday night before we started fishing. And then um, Darren Bickerton was on our bank taking photographs of the, of the lads with uh, no catch shots or no bait shots. We weren't giving anything away. And um, But the most, most intriguing thing I found was that I started to share um, on my page that then went to the census pages, then went to all the other other media outlets, other teams, you know, the Czechs, the Italians, uh, the French, their photographs, their catch shots, their fishing, their slider fishing. And I think that, that was as well taken on board as, as, the, as, as the photographs of our lads because people that could then see the preparation these other teams were putting into it and the methods these other teams were fishing. And come the, come the actual events itself, there were some fantastic videos virtually went live of, of um, some of the Italians and some of our lads actually catching fish and netting fish. And it wasn't just from, we weren't doing the filming, but we had the wherewithal to get that, share that media with, that, with our sites to, to, to get that out there. And, uh, and the positivity was 99.99% from everybody. And, uh, and and I think the one or two that, you know, sort of had something negative to say were soon brushed aside. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's brilliant from our side to say that, uh, you know, there's not a great deal of coverage when you guys are out and about there. So to see as many different people posting and to see the reaction from the public in our country, I mean, it's really impressive for us yeah, it was, it was and it's well deserved as well. Um, so, yeah, like I say, Mark, tremendous result. Well done to you and the team. Um, I mean, on, for you next, what's next for Mark Downs? I believe you're in, is it Slovenia? Are yeah, you heading to Slovenia I'm, soon? I'm away for four weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off to Slovenia. I've got to go to a meeting in Rome, so I'm driving to Rome. Is that a FIPS meeting? FIPS meeting in Rome, yeah. Then I'm driving to Slovenia, um, fishing the veterans, world champs, hopefully. And then I'm driving down to France for uh, the census challenge final. And then four weeks later, I'll be arriving home again. So uh, apart from the road that, for four weeks. Apart from that, you're not doing much. And what about the England team? Then what's next for England? It'll be well. We need to move on and upwards. Um, World I've champs. Always, I've always says that the most important thing, as far as this England team, is that we've got to get people more involved on a managerial level with the squads. Um, it's so important to have good guidance on the bank, and uh, making Will Will captain has helped. Um, we've got I had a great backroom staff over there. We had uh, Darren Bickerton, Nathan Hughes, and Mark Derry. Uh, okay, Nathan and, and Mark are parents of a couple of the anglers, but they've got a massive wealth of experience and knowledge and give me a load of feedback. But we've really got to start developing um, uh, the managerial side of all the international teams. We've got to build a pool of former anglers and, 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 and new anglers that want to develop the managerial side. I'm not going to go on forever, that's, that's, that's a fact. Um, and uh, you know, within the next year or two years, I'll need assistance, and you know, and these assistants will have to take over, and and and, and develop the develop the skills that are needed um, to carry the team forward. And the team that we have at the moment going forward, although it's still inexperienced compared to, I won't say the old guard because the old guard is still very much involved. Um, you know. There's a job there to nurture these new, new anglers and bring them on for, for the foreseeable future because I honestly believe with the nucleus of youngsters we've got plus um, the experience we have the, with the older lads, 
um, I think the team's in you know in great shape for the for the next decade at least. So where's the World Championships and the Europeans next year? Well, next year we're going to Croatia. And the, ven the venue's not decided. Is that for the Europeans? That's for the world. So, world. Um, it could be a lake, it could be a river. Um, they're deciding that hopefully uh, at the end of this month. And um, the Europeans is back to Karush. Um, it's been cancelled for a year now. Um, and that's a standalone venue. It's 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 70, 80 yards wide. It's five to six foot deep. You, fit, you fish 12 foot. 12 foot deep with a 16 gram waggler, no shot down, and you fish for odd barbel. It's strange, strange, strange venue, sticky maggot distance. But we've got the experience for there now. We've been there and we've won medals. We've got a team that can do it. So, um, you know, the most important thing is that, you know, we, you know, we, we prepare like we prepare like we've prepared this year for all the events and make sure the team is ready to go. And um, I'm sure we, we'll continue to do well. Brilliant. Thank you, Matt. Well, I appreciate your time. Once again, congratulations from me and everyone at the Anglin Trust and the rest of the country. Done really, really well. Look forward to seeing how you got on in Slovenia with the Vets and the Masters. And uh, we'll, we'll keep a close eye on, on how things develop. Thanks for your time, Mark.